The average temperature at the North Pole is around 0 degrees Celsius in the summer and minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter. In contrast, the South Pole's average summer temperature is minus 28.2 degrees Celsius and its average winter temperature is minus 60 degrees Celsius. But the question is why the temperatures between the North and the South Pole differ so much although both receive almost the same amount of sunlight. When we think about the poles, the first thing that comes to mind is extreme cold, but few people realize that the South Pole is much colder than the North Pole. The South Pole is located on the continent of Antarctica, which itself sits on a massive ice sheet that averages about 3 kilometers thick. This ice sheet rests on a continental landmass, which raises the elevation of the South Pole to about 2,835 meters above sea level. Compare this to the North Pole, which is at sea level, sitting atop a relatively thin layer of sea ice that floats on the Arctic Ocean. Altitude plays a crucial role in temperature. The higher you go, the thinner the atmosphere becomes. The atmosphere acts as a blanket, trapping heat and keeping the surface warm. But at higher altitudes, this blanket is much thinner, so less heat is trapped. As a result, temperatures drop significantly. For every 1,000 feet, about 300 meters, you ascend, the temperature typically drops by about 32 degrees Celsius. Given that the South Pole is over 9,000 feet above sea level, this alone accounts for a significant difference in temperature compared to the North Pole. But altitude is just one piece of the puzzle. There are other factors that contribute to the South Pole's frigid conditions, and to understand them, we need to consider the broader geographical and climatic context. Ocean currents play a critical role in the temperature differences between the poles, and it's essential to include this in our discussion. Let's understand how the movement of warm and cold ocean currents contributes to the stark contrast in temperatures between the North and South Poles. Ocean currents are essentially the planet's way of redistributing heat, moving warm water from the equator toward the poles and bringing cold water back toward the equator. These currents have a profound impact on regional climates, especially in polar regions. The key difference between the North and South Poles is how these currents interact with the surrounding oceans, contributing to the significant temperature differences we observe. At the North Pole, the Arctic Ocean is relatively enclosed by landmasses, allowing it to receive the influence of warm ocean currents. One of the most significant currents affecting the Arctic is the Gulf Stream. Originating in the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf Stream transports warm water northward along the eastern coast of the United States and across the Atlantic Ocean, where it becomes the North Atlantic Drift. This warm current eventually reaches the waters surrounding the Arctic, bringing with it warmer temperatures that help to moderate the climate in the region. The presence of the Gulf Stream and its extension into the Arctic Ocean means that the North Pole benefits from a relatively milder climate compared to the South Pole. Even though the Arctic is still cold, the influx of warmer water helps to prevent temperatures from dropping as low as those at the South Pole. This is why, despite being located at the same latitude, the North Pole experiences warmer average temperatures than its southern counterpart. In contrast, the South Pole is surrounded by the Southern Ocean which is home to the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, ACC. The ACC is the strongest ocean current in the world, and it flows in a continuous loop around Antarctica, effectively isolating the continent from warmer ocean currents. Unlike the Arctic, which receives warm water from the Gulf Stream, the southern ocean around Antarctica is dominated by cold, dense water that originates from the deep ocean. This cold ocean current plays a crucial role in maintaining the extreme cold of the South Pole. The ACC acts as a barrier, preventing warm water from lower latitudes from reaching the continent. Without the influence of warm ocean currents, the waters surrounding Antarctica remain frigid, contributing to the overall cold climate of the South Pole. Furthermore, the cold waters of the Southern Ocean enhance the albedo effect around Antarctica. The cold water keeps the sea ice intact, and the ice, in turn, reflects most of the sunlight that reaches it, preventing the ocean from absorbing heat. This cycle of cold water maintaining sea ice, which then reflects sunlight and keeps the water cold, helps to perpetuate the extreme cold conditions at the South Pole. The extreme cold at the South Pole is also exacerbated by the phenomenon of polar nights and the lack of direct sunlight. The Earth's axial tilt means that the poles experience extreme seasonal variations in daylight. During the Antarctic winter, the South Pole is tilted away from the sun, leading to continuous darkness for several months. This absence of sunlight means there's no solar energy to warm the surface, 
causing temperatures to drop to their lowest levels of the year. Even during the summer, when the sun does return, it never rises very high above the horizon. The low angle of the sun means that its rays have to pass through more of the Earth's atmosphere, which reduces their intensity and further limits the amount of heat that reaches the surface. The dryness of Antarctica is another important factor. While we often associate cold climates with snow and ice, Antarctica is technically a desert. It receives very little precipitation, less than two inches of water equivalent per year at the South Pole. This dryness is crucial because moisture in the air can help to retain heat. In more humid environments, water vapor in the air absorbs and re-radiates heat, keeping temperatures from dropping too low. However, the dry air over Antarctica means that there's little moisture to trap heat, allowing temperatures to fall to extremely low levels. Finally, it's important to note that the South Pole's extreme cold is also a result of the continent's unique climate history. Antarctica has been isolated from the rest of the world for millions of years, following the breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana. As it drifted southward, the continent became encased in ice, and its climate gradually evolved into the extreme cold that we see today. The development of the Antarctic ice sheet began around 34 million years ago and has since grown to cover nearly the entire continent, contributing to the extreme cold at the South Pole. In summary, the drastically low average temperature at the South Pole compared to the North Pole can be attributed to a combination of factors, starting with the significant difference in altitude. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay warm, and see you next time.